Hey Oscar fans, welcome to another video from Just Two Dudes. My name's Louie. My name's Seth. Alright, um, crazy game. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely crazy game. Obviously, the Ohio State game. Right. We're talking about here. Um, I want to jump right into it. Um, it seems to me like I've never seen more bullshit being thrown around by fans <laughs> and media yeah. in my whole life. Um, involving Nebraska football. I think there's two kinds of fans right now. The fans who want to lie and the fans that want to tell the truth. Um, the same people that hated on Taylor Martinez last week, you need to keep hating. Uh, the same people that supported him last week should keep supporting him. Um, I don't know how one game turns anything around. Oh. As far as if a guy's good or if a guy's not. He... He came out of nowhere and had a great quarter and a half that a spark was provided by somebody else. Now, I have not been the biggest supporter of Taylor Martinez coming into this game. I and I'm have. and Seth has been, and I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I, I, I support him now. Here's what I will say. When Levante David makes the play with eight minutes left. About or 7.55 like or something? Eight, 8 13, 8.30 yeah. or something. In, in the third quarter, mm -hmm. that seemed to turn Taylor Martinez around. Well, That seemed on. to turn, you'll get your chance, that seemed, that seemed to turn the offensive line around. That seemed to turn everything around. And Taylor, for the final 23 minutes of that game, gave me hope that he can get back to his pre- Missouri 2010 form just gave me hope before before the Vontae strip though that whole game he started off 10 for 10 when is the last time he played in against real competition if ever he went 10 for 10 he's the quarterback you're down 27 to 6 I and in the in the season is looking over and people yeah. can lie if you want you can you can sit here and tell me oh Louie I had faith the whole time no you didn't you know you were just like me at 27 yeah. to 6 thinking oh my gosh can we squeak out one against Minnesota and hopefully Northwestern because there's no way you're beating Michigan Michigan State Iowa and, not, and, and, and Penn State not not the team from the last and then the that's, what, that's, quarters, that's what I'm saying. Okay, half, so Taylor yeah. Martinez at 27 to six. I'm sitting there thinking, what do you got to lose? Breon Carnes. I'm not saying Breon Carnes is better than Taylor Martinez. Just like just like but, the Kyle Orton, Tim Tebow thing this week, and but just someone to get us hard. You know, your yeah. your your season. Which I think I think is just stupid. Don't even get me started okay. on that. Your season's over. You're down 27 to six. Your season's over. Yeah. You you know if you if you're happy going six and six, whatever. But that's where that season was headed. Yeah. And it Taylor was Martinez heading. was the quarterback. He was going to be the quarterback of a six and six team. Right. But this whole year, it's not like it's been the offense's fault. Hell, the offense has won us two games in the last two years. I don't know really when the last time when we needed in a close game the offense to win. Maybe once or twice the last few years it's happened, and they've already done it twice this year. But the fact of the matter is, is this offense has never been used to having to score as many points as they are because of the defense. And, you know, to me, it, yeah, Taylor Martinez would have been the quarterback of a 6-6 six and six right. potential team. But we were 6-6, six and six, not because of the offense's play. At this point, it, the defense has been absolutely embarrassing and... Well, embarrassing. It's right. So, so, so to me, to me, if we were, if we kept that pace, six and six would have had more to do with the defense than Taylor Martinez. Well, well, that's okay. But what I'm saying is, at six and six, what do you got to lose? This guy is not quarterbacking in that game. He was not quarterbacking your offense to any kind of points. Well, yeah, but he was so so at twenty seven to six. If Ohio State goes down and and, and scores to make it thirty four six. What would even be the purpose? Why not bring on Breon Carnes at that I point? Don't know, because, well, keep in mind, as fragile as Taylor can be sometimes. So what? I know, I know. Your season's but, over. Yeah, but if they it's, score not, there. it's not like Breon Carnes. It's not like Taylor Martinez is a senior and it's time to move towards the future. Taylor Martinez is 
is the past, the now, and the future, and that's just how it's gonna be. Right? People but, can talk about Breon Carnes. Oh, the only reason Breon Carnes isn't playing is because is because he doesn't know the offense yet. But when he does, he's gonna surpass Taylor Martinez. Breon Carnes is good. Saying that Breon Carnes is good in the spring game when they were only running ten plays. I I'm not saying that. I'm not no, saying Breon is I'm not better. Saying, I'm not saying you are. There's a lot of people out there, especially after last week. Who would th who were thinking Breon Carnes is probably a better quarterback than Taylor Martinez? Well, and at twenty-seven to six, I was kind of thinking, who cares? But an amazing thing happened. Yeah, take it. I mean, Braxton Miller, the Ohio State's quarterback, little simple read option takes up the middle, and he's going down, and I'm sitting there thinking, great, another gash for seven yards, mm -hmm. awesome. And Levante David, out of nowhere, just shows up in the screen, just grabs that ball, and just straight up herculeses it out of Braxton Miller's arms. Game changed. Season change? I mean, Well, what's funny knows? is after the game, Levante David, and I'll spare you my Levante David imitation, <laughs> but af after the game, Levante's sitting there... <laughs> Le Levante's sitting there talking about we were just doing what Coach told us to do. Really? Why now? And I mean, after after five and 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 almost two thirds of a game, now you're gonna do it. Now you're gonna go ahead. Now you're gonna try and strip the ball. Now you're interested in, t in, in takeaways. Now you're interested in trying to to rip the ball out of somebody's you know, hands. It's, who knows? Maybe it could just be something where enough was enough. You know, eventually we knew. Eventually, this defense with Carl and Bo had to show something and stop yeah. it it was and i think well maybe me more than you but you knew it was going to stop at some point you just hoped it was soon enough i didn't know if it was going to stop right but you know finally I, finally somebody had enough of it and somebody decided to make the play that needed to be made right and next thing you know everybody's making plays the de the defensive line's playing better. Right. The secondary's playing better. Yeah. I mean, we'll we'll get we'll get into yeah. that stuff. So more, but. so the the thing about Braxton Miller and and I will say this and and Seth and I have kind of argued all year long. Um, Braxton Miller got beat down by Michigan State. He got rendered one hundred percent ineffective. And I've said it all year. If you play against the University of Nebraska, you will look like an all American quarterback. Derek Carr, Keith Price, Russell Wilson, and now Okay, well Russell Wilson could be an all American quarterback. Now Braxton Miller. So what I'm all I'm saying is every quarterback has lit Nebraska up. Every decent quarterback who who will probably struggles against most teams outside of Russell Wilson, torched Nebraska, and I did not know why that was going to stop. No, and, and I don't know how it was going to stop. But here, and here's for, what, for the record, what I was telling you, I don't think Braxton Miller is a good quarterback. Now he just has a lot of tools to to for there to be a lot of potential there. Mm -hmm. To me. I mean, it's a little off topic, but to me, he really reminds me of a Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> I know, I know, but just his skill set standpoint, he hasn't done anything yet. But that's kind Ty of why I Tyrod was a great big dude. This kid's a skinny twig. He's a freshman. Tyrod wasn't a skinny twig as a freshman. How do you know? Because we saw him as a oh, freshman. Fine. But anyway, so, that's just who he reminded me of from his skill set. So, miraculously... Completely out of nowhere, Levante David makes this incredible yep. play. And um, maybe, just maybe, you know, because I think it was early in the third quarter, or maybe late in the half, they were talking about Nebraska's players were huddled together, and um, they were all hollering at one another, and Carl walked up to the huddle and said, um, I have nothing left to tell you guys. It's the same thing over and over. I I have nothing. I don't know what else to say. Yeah. And and that's what the sideline reporter said that they that they heard. Yeah. And you know, at some point in time, your defense, you know, not the 2007 version of the black shirts. Um, at some point in time, they did have to make a play. Yeah. You know, and I did. am I am so yeah. amazed. First of all, that he made that play because Nebraska had not shown that all year long. Yeah. Any kind of want to to strip the ball from anybody. Okay, but more importantly, twenty-seven to six. You know what I'm thinking? Oh, we get the ball at the eighteen. Watch this. 
two penalties and we're kicking a field goal from the 30. Right. Okay. But then racks up the middle for five yards and then Taylor 18 yards untouched. untouched. And you know what? Me and you were talking about this and we actually agree on something, guys. Um, when Nebraska plays great, it's not Taylor Martinez throwing passes. And that's not what gets Taylor and this team going. When Taylor runs it in the end zone himself, even if it's a two-yard quarterback right. sneak or an option keeper, when he puts it in the end zone and doesn't hand it to anybody else for whatever reason, that gets him and his rhythm his mojo. and his flow, mm -hmm. and that gets his confidence going. Mm -hmm. When he sits there and he can't run the ball that well, and the only plays he has are in the passing game, we we don't do good in those games at all. Right. And let, let's 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 backtrack. Michigan, yeah. uh, uh, um, Ohio State the week the week before put up 178 yards and scored a very late touchdown against Michigan State. Had nine quarterback sacks. They had they and had. They couldn't even touch this kid for two and a half quarters. Right. Um, they listen to this. They got however many yards they had last week. Mm -hmm. In the first half, they ran for that many against right. us. Right, and in their two, their first two series, they almost had 178 yards. So I'm thinking this season's over. Yeah. At 20 to six, at 27 to six, and then we go three and out in our first possession, and I think I'm thinking it's over. Yeah. And you know what? What what what's amazing in, in Husker, uh -huh. in Husker fans, you you have to own this. I, I will own it. I'm t I do not quit on my team. If we are 6-4 and four in that 11th game of the year, I'm in front of that TV and I'm hollering my guts out. I do not quit on the Huskers. Even when the Huskers quit on me, I don't quit. I do not quit. Nobody did I said think, you did. Oh, some people have. Here's the thing. I thought the damn thing was over. Yeah. 27 to 6, it was over. I'm like, bench Jared Crick, get get every senior out there, get them. Get, get them gone. Yeah. I don't want nothing to do with them because the season's already over. It was a thought. I wasn't adamant about it because you guys know by now when I'm adamant and passionate about something, I'll, I'll say it and own it, okay? But I'm sitting there thinking, gosh, what do we got to lose, okay? Never accuse me of quitting on the Huskers. Just because I said I, 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 I thought the game was over, I'm, I'm just making a point here. Even though I thought the game was over, doesn't mean I was going to turn the TV off. But what's ticking me off is all these fans who, who hated on Taylor coming into the game now want to say nice things about him. Own who you are as a yeah, Husker fan. I hate, man. This kid, for some reason, I call him Haiti Smurf. This might be getting into our personal life a little bit, but I call him Haiti Smurf. He hates on everything. It's not that bad. You know it is. I hate this. This guy's a you know what. You're and not, we're not, we're You're not talking. We're not talking about Huskers. We're just talking about everything. Oh, that's dumb. That's stupid. But for some reason, this kid has determined that this year he's going to be Mr. Positivity about the Huskers. <laughs> and last that. week. If, 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 if you saw the video last week, he was kind of like, he didn't know what to say about Taylor. You oh, didn't come said, out and say, oh, I still love you, Taylor. He, no. You, you, you didn't, but you didn't slam him like everybody else did. No, all, the only comment I ever made negative was he kind of falls apart mentally. Mm -hmm. I use the term mental midget. Mm -hmm. And he, he can. He okay. has the potential to. Right. Brett so far so, had the potential to. I'm not even concerned. So, so, so you have been supportive all year, oh, and yes. you need to continue to do that. And Me, I've been down on this team. You're still down. And <laughs> I'm still scared shitless, but I tell you what, that last quarter and a half gave me hope. You I know, saw quarterbacks getting hit. I saw TFLs. Hey, ain't damn one by Jared Crick. Um, I, I saw pass breakups. I saw yeah. guys being covered. Yeah. I saw I saw two like, turnovers. Like um, Levante David said in the post game that during the week and stuff, him and the defensive players, not not necessarily the coaches, mm -hmm. but they were talking about getting their swagger back. Cause you know that was that was the thing the last years. That's the word you heard right. in camp, in the camps, in spring and fall camps. You heard the term swagger thrown around, right. first by Niles. Yeah, Niles right. Paul. Okay. Right. But anyway, no. And he's saying that they've been looking for a way to get that swagger back. Maybe that strip for the rest of the year is what will give that defense swagger. 
Uh, Austin Cassidy was even playing good football at that point. <laughs> what more do I need to say? Well, I think the video is over. Why? <laughs> well, I mean, I can't top that. No, oh, well, I can't top that. I mean, he I'm, was. I mean, he did it. I mean, in the first half, he jumps up for a ball. I, I'm i not catching that. Right, right, and right. It just hot potato. Ah. Okay, so. He was a quarterback. He can catch. Okay, so before we actually get to talking a, a, a little bit more about the game, I just, and I'm probably repeating myself, but I need to be clear on this. No, I have, I have, I have, I had no reason to be overly optimistic until that strip by Levante David for this year. Yeah. Okay. We get that. <laughs> and hopefully that last quarter and a half, I saw a lot of hope. Will I continue to nitpick? Yes. Will I continue? Oh my gosh, to be, you always will nitpick. Will I continue to be down on this team? Yes, because I simply am not happy with being nine and four every year. I, you know, two. We need to get back to two losses at, at the most. The best and defense, the best defense we've had in a long, 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 long time. You still nitpicked it every damn thing about that defense in 2009. The only thing you didn't was the play of the defensive line. Linebackers and missed tackles, get them out. Larry, oh, the Larry, linebackers missed endless tackles. Larry Asante, Lock get him. in a phone booth with him for 15 <laughs> minutes, please. See, that, that's what I'm getting at. The best, defense, the best defense we've had in a long time. You still hate it on half the No, stuff. I nitpicked. Because I, okay, won, okay, I okay. won a lot. I won a lot. So <laughs> basically, let's, let's own it, Husker fans. Mm -hmm. You know, let, let, let's own it. You don't like Taylor? Don't like him. But don't lie about it. You love him? Say you love him. When he throws three interceptions, you got his back? Have his back. There's some guy on there doing this video. It's a little three-minute video. I even left a comment on it talking. It's all slow like this. You haters. You can't say nothing about Taylor now. Really? I can't? Hell yes, I can. I can pick Taylor's game apart all I want. Because when it comes down to it, we're just two dudes. We get to say whatever we want. Yeah. So I'll keep nitpicking on Taylor, and he'll keep loving him because we own who we are as Husker fans. You will nitpick on him until he completes 80% of his passes consistently. Right. That's always right. your measuring mark. Right. And, 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 and you know as well as I do, and we talked about this earlier, when the score was 27-6, to six, oh I did not gosh. sit there and bash Taylor. Okay. I don't, I don't think... Uh, just, just go, just go. No, did I? I no, said no, 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 no. Okay, so what about the actual game? Do we want to talk about? I want to say something that you know I've been waiting for the opportunity to, but this game. Quincy Anunwa. No. Is that who? No. This game just to me reeks of the 2009 Missouri game. Why are you shaking your head? We were sitting there. Because I can. We were sitting there at that point in the Missouri game from 2009 wondering, oh my gosh, here we go again, you know? But then, and Donovan Sue makes that play. He made a couple. He makes that play where he chases Blaine Gabbard down, knocks the football out, takes one bounce into Crick's, into Crick, and then has, has, he, has Jared Crick made a play since then, by the way? He made 14 last year. Okay. All anyway, the non -conference. and then you see a and then you see a JUCO defensive back make a huge interception. Next thing you know, seasons change. Defense started playing a lot better, and we started playing good football. Levante David, that strip could be like that Sue play. The Stanley Jean Baptiste interception could be like the Dijon Gomes interception from that game. But that, that's we just, go on from that game to lose to Iowa State and Texas Tech. In back-to-back -back weeks. Shut up. I'm just, I'm just saying, we played really good football at that point from the rest of the season. I, we did. We lost three games after that. None of it was because I'm just saying, I'm just talking about the defense right now. I'm talking about the defense. Iowa State beat us, but they only scored nine points. That is never a defense's fault. No, no. Okay, but anyway, let's get let's get in let's get into the actual actual game then. Okay. Um, from you know there was two games. Yeah. There was bef you know before Levante and after Levante. We've already spent about and, twenty minutes talking about before Levante though. And okay, so after the game, I I'm not even gonna lie. So Taylor Taylor two plays touchdown 27-13. I'm yes. like huh. This will be interesting. I wonder what the defense is going to do here. Be thirty-four to uh, 
14 before you know it. They knocked Braxton yeah. Miller out of the game. Um, out of play. Um, then more stops. Yeah, more stops. Quarterback, we knocked Braxton Miller out of the game. Yeah. He's off. Statue quarterback comes in. A lot of pressure. And we're starting to make plays. Defensive line's getting a push. Okay. Okay. Linebacker, so, linebackers are tackling well. And it's not just Levante. Will Compton. Sean Fisher made yeah, a play. Yeah, TFLs. Yeah. TFLs, where Nebraska ranks in the bottom of the Big 12. Big 10. Oh, and that's that's disgusting with uh -huh. the defensive line. Okay, so, so and, 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 and just, I'm not, I'm, I'm nitpicking a little here, but at 27 to 13, Taylor Martinez drops back. And only Taylor Martinez, at this point in his career, will throw a touchdown. Oh my gosh, and, here and, you and, go. And have Louis uh, nitpicking, but you all saw it. There's Quincy Anunwa streaking in the middle of the field. Beautiful route, by the way. Taylor throws him a perfect ball. I'm thinking, what in the hell is happening? Wow, one play? Really? Turns it all around? It's and then football. they show Aaron Green streaking down the sideline. He's so wide open, it's not even And fun. you're mad You're mad at Taylor Martinez for throwing a no. touchdown pass to no. this wide open guy instead of the guy that was more wide open. Okay, well, when you're Taylor Martinez and you got one guy with nobody around him and you got another guy with three guys around him, at this point in Taylor Martinez' career, I would prefer he throws it to the wide open guy. I would prefer he throws it to the guy straight in front of him so he doesn't do that weird thing where his body goes this way, then he throws that way, and he probably would have missed the throw. Plus, that's a true freshman. Quincy Nunn was one of his favorite receivers. Right. He might trust him a little more. All I was going to say before you I jumped know. on me was, is that's just where Taylor's at. Yeah. He locked in on his guy. His guy got open. He went to him. He didn't look around, but at this point, you he know what? He started to do a better... He did... But, I'm not going to say start doing yeah. it because then you'll say it's one game. Yeah. But in that game, he did a better job oh. of looking for receivers and taking what was given to him. That, that one game may turn out to be the most pivotal game that we've had in such a long time. That is At 27-20, okay, mm -hmm. defense continues to make stops. Yes. Yeah, they, they, they gave they up really that did. one drive at 27-20 where, where uh, Ohio State elected to punt instead of trying like a 48 or 49-yarder, yeah, 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 yeah. okay? Yeah. But other than but that, that's okay. it's that's lights right. out. Yeah. Taylor Martinez, to me, the most the, the, the most impressive thing was, um, I think it was the drive before where on third and nine. Third and six. No, I think it was longer because no. we got a few yards, the one where the ball was actually down and we got away with it. Yeah, it was he, third and six. He, he threw the pass to set up the punt. He didn't force anything. Right. When and he didn't try to run around and take a sack. Yep. He just simply... Yep. He's like, all right, I got to yep. try to do something here. He tried to go into the left to mm -hmm. evade pressure. Nothing. Came back to the right. Ball was on the ground, though, if you if you go back and right. look at it. Ball is on the ground. But then he goes to the right, and, and of course, Rex Burkhead standing there, like, wide open at the first down line. And only Brandon <laughs> Kenny, only Brandon Kenny and Niles Paul would jump in front of a wide open mm -hmm. receiver for the first down to catch it for a three-yard gain and then a punt. But okay. still, getting back to the play, yeah, it's just Taylor... Taylor Saying, okay, let me try to do something here. I'm not going to stare at pressure. Let me try to do something here. And, you know, he made the right play. Yeah, it's okay to punt when you're down by seven. And it's you okay. have the momentum. You can punt and regain yep. momentum. It's, it's okay. up to the defense then to keep it. And then that's at, when it comes into the team. Then at 27-20, we get the ball back. Taylor makes another really good decision, yeah. evading pressure. He, he, he does, you know, a lot of people don't like it, but we have Taylor Martinez as our quarterback. We better learn to love the, 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 the check down. Yeah. The, 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 the little toss to the, um, of course the phone's ringing. It's okay. And then the answer the, machine will go off. Okay. It's, 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 it's uh, absolutely wonderful to see uh, Rex Burkhead with five catches for 59 yards. Yeah. You know what? That's always been the thing. The last few years, Roy Hulu made a lot of good things happen. Mm -hmm. Why can't we throw him a screen pass? And we still haven't ran one screen. Right. Okay, so why? We have athletic linemen. Right. We have linemen. We run sweeps. We run sweeps all the dang time. That's the same as a screen mm -hmm. pass, getting that lineman out there. They've proven they can do that. And Rex Burkhead is that type of running back. He needs two or three screen passes a game. I I, th I think Rex is showing that if this team is going to be successful, it's going it's going to go mostly through him yep. with a little bit of Taylor sprinkled. Absolutely. In. Um, okay, so um, 
the, the, the dump off to Rex. Rex mm -hmm. makes a guy miss and houses it from about 30 yards away. That was at 27 to 27. No, he that was at 27. 20. No. No, Rex scored the go-ahead one on the ground. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Okay, wow. so, so, you're so, right about so Rex so, so Rex gets Rex gets in the house there. Yeah. And I, I was yeah. just amazed. I can't even tell you guys enough. I'm like, wait, what's going to happen? When, when's somebody going to lay it on the carpet for the scoop and score for Ohio State? We're not capable. This team of gutless mental midgets is not capable of 28 unanswered points. Maybe they're not gutless mental midgets anymore. Praise the Lord. Yeah, and let so what every year we just we talked about every year whether it's NBA, NFL, NCAA well, there's football. One play. There's always one play there's that one. sticks out for some team that ends up making a run that turned their season around. What one play, one play, one moment, one game it can do that. You know, well, let's hope that's what just happened. You you always go back and look. The, you always go back and look. In every team that's won a national championship, you'll see that one play where things were kind of, well, maybe not those teams because those teams were so much Yeah. But any team who has good success, there's that one play. The Saints their bad. Super Bowl year. When, yeah. when they were down, I forget, against two, and, and, and Darren Sharper just ran up to the guy, stripped him, and took it back 50 yards. Yeah, you know, there's, there's always yeah. something to go back and look on, good or bad. Right. Okay, so basically we, we better wrap this up. And I, did we talk about the difference between social media and the, and the regular media last week? No. Okay, one thing I do want to say is, is, is they've been talking a lot. You know, Taylor and, and message boards. Hold and, up, hold and, up. How, how are we not going to give a shout out to Stanley Jean-Baptiste? Someone who actually made a play on that defense. My bad. Take it away. Come on now. Take you it know, away, dude. Stanley Jean Baptiste just moved from receiver to corner two weeks practice. Yada yada yada. He he came in, made a couple nice plays before that interception. Mm -hmm. Had some good coverage. Even uh, had one pass breakup that was really nice. Um, Followed that up with a 15 yard uh, late hit. Yeah, he's new to the position. I mean, he's got to learn that. So you probably he'll you know, hell he'll probably do it again. Mm -hmm. But anyway. He makes a great interception, and at that point in time, the game was tied. We still had momentum, but Ohio State could still just go right down the field, even with mm -hmm. a thousand-minute quarterback. And he makes a great play on the ball, and he picks it, and then next thing you know, we're down, and then we take the lead just running the mm -hmm. ball. And then, you know, we're able to run out the clock. So to me, I just want to say one thing before you get into your thing. I'm going to finish up with something. I don't know this year if the Huskers will ever earn black shirts on defense. But I will say that right now, if the way I would want, I would want Levante David to get his black shirt for sure. I know you said something earlier about maybe Stanley Jean-Baptiste getting one for actually making a play. But here's the thing. Levante David has made it clear after last week, he is taking this defense, and no matter what he has to do, he's not going to allow it to continue. Or at least he's going to do everything he can to try to stop that. So to me, making that type of play, that is what a black shirt is all about. Is doing what you have to do to, to win the game from the defensive side of the ball. Give him his black shirt. Let him get out there. And then, you know, maybe some other people will be like, damn, I got to get that too. And then maybe, I'm just saying, maybe give the defense a little more extra motivation going through a bye week and then into the next week. That, right. that, that's just me. But go ahead and finish up. No, nothing thing. wrong with that thought. My thing is people are, are, are confusing the difference between media and social media. Um, Taylor says the media is ripping him. The media is not ripping Taylor. The media is, is Lincoln Journal star, Omaha World Herald, TV announcers, um, ESPN, uh, the Big Ten Network, that's yeah. media, okay? And those people, as far as I'm concerned, the way Taylor played uh, the first five and a half games this year, I think he was pretty fair game, you know? And I, But I think they've been really, really nice to him. No, no lines, no lines were crossed with, yeah, with those media. But mates. social media, Twitter and Facebook and, and Husker Illustrated message boards, those are the ones that wanted Taylor's head on a swivel. Yeah. And or sorry, what? sorry, sorry, on a, on a platter. You know they what, I was going to say something. I know he's, he didn't have the best year so far passing and making some decisions. 
But so what? He threw three interceptions against Wisconsin. So what? I guess every every quarterback's going to throw three interceptions. And you know, nobody. Here's another aspect of that. Nobody was making a play for him. All great quarterbacks need people to make plays for him. His defense is sitting there giving up point after point, drive after drive. What well, else is he to 13 at that point? You can blame Tim Beck, I don't or you can blame Taylor Martinez. Well, I blame it's, both. I well, blame both. Okay. But, no, but, okay. what I'm, but what I'm saying is three interceptions in a big game that turn into touchdowns doesn't mean you should get benched. Doesn't mean people should hound you all over. Doesn't mean you should show up to to a Spanish class and have people coming up to you and telling you to stop throwing interceptions, you POS. I mean, come on. That's taking stuff way too far. Always. I can get on here and do all these videos all I want, but if I ever saw Taylor in person, I'd say, keep your head up, young man. Yeah, you know, it's just, we get a hide behind this, and, 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 and that's okay because we own it. But I would never cross the line in person, okay? Right. So I think the media has been kind to Taylor. But the social media is where he's getting ripped apart. I just want to throw that out and differentiate the two. Uh, now on to Bo Pelini. Um, he's hot-headed. He's a bit of a... He works contradicts himself. He, works he does me. all kinds of things. But you knew that when you hired him. Yeah. So, you know, people... Kiss, kiss, kiss off as far as that goes. Yeah, like people, like there's the tension between Bo and the media. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bo made it very clear last week, Taylor Martinez is his quarterback. And still in post game, people are asking him questions about Taylor's future and, and stuff like that at quarterback position. You know what? I have no problem with Bo saying stuff to the media like he said. If some people want to say he handled it, he crossed line, so what? I agree. Head coaches get across lines with I reporters. Agree. When it comes down to it, the reporters don't matter a, to a, a damn thing. They relay stuff to the public. Big I mean, you know what I mean? Oh, they're incredibly no. powerful and influential. We live in Nebraska, which is a small market. But they, we, we still are influenced by Stable, you know, like, by Stable um, and Chattel and all those guys. When, when Taylor Martinez threw that first half interception and the crowd is booing, and Bo sits there and he goes like this to the crowd, I love it. You know, when it comes down to it, it doesn't matter what he thinks of the fans. It's just, you know, the fact that even though fans might hate him, the fact he's still sticking up for all his players is what, to me, separates him. That's that. That's fine. I disagree on some points of that. Um, well, just, just, just me, a few. Me and you disagree but with him. The only time where I think he crosses the line, and I'd rather he not, is when he loses his temper on the sidelines. Last year, the Texas A&M game was a classic example. Within five minutes of the game, he was on the sideline throwing, uh, throwing fits. It lasted all game. He never stopped. And oh, a lot in of with, crap happened with, last year. Right, right. but I think he I had 18 that. penalties that game. When he's on the sideline ranting and raving, the officials, it's only year four, they've had enough. And they take it out on the team. You know, it's one thing when I don't like it. It's one thing when he he has to remember on the sideline. Uh, yeah, th th there's a difference. Yeah. Coordinators, mm -hmm. he sometimes he acts more like a coordinator than a head coach. Okay, but that's to me I don't necessarily have a problem with it. When when your team gets penalized because he can't watch himself on the sideline, you don't have a problem with it. When he Dude. loses focus and the team loses focus. He's undisciplined. His team becomes undisciplined. You're gonna play how you're gonna play how you, how your head coaches. But to me, I've never had a problem. I never really had a problem with the last year, even the A and M game. Because honestly, a lot of those penalties oh, weren't oh, even always, penalties. Always have a problem with the sideline decorum. That's all I'm saying. That's fine. But let's just let you know, Husker fans. Um, we got you know what I you know what I'm gonna say real quick. I was talking to Seth earlier and. I don't know if you guys know this, but Ohio State's offensive line has like. Oh uh, yeah, get yeah. Let me. Let, I actually threw some recruiting stuff at Seth that Seth didn't know, but I started remembering that these guys were. Uh, Mike Adams. Mike Adams. Hurry, their left starting tackle. Left tackle. Uh huh. Five number, star recruit. Number one. Number one tackle. Number three in the nation. Uh -huh. Michael Brewster, their center, was a tackle in high school. Five star. 12th yep. best in the country. And then one of their two of their other starting yep. offensive linemen were four stars in the top 100. Okay. Michael That's Brewster, the Ohio State center. If there's any Ohio State fans watching this video, Michael Brewster, oh my gosh, will you come play for Nebraska, please? Dude, he 
Not outside, only outside, he might be a better center than Russell Wilson is a quarterback. He might. Yeah, he's the best player we played all year. He he's not only going to get drafted in the first round. Whoever drafts him next year, it will be in the first round, and he will be starting for them. Oh, you know, all I gotta say is the Vikings center sucks. Yeah, you should draft Michael Brewster. So does <laughs> the Cowboys. He can't even snap at Romo. At least you. At least hey, Jared Crick won some games. Jer Jared Crick and Baker Steinkuhler. Do you think Michael Brewster's a good player? I'm just wondering. Oh, uh, Baker thinks Jared Baker Crick. Good. Jared Crick, please, whatever's going on with you, man, I don't know if it's it's scheme and they're taking you out of the game. Let's get back because, man, do we need that guy. Yeah. You know, uh, are we done? I just, You'll finish it up? I'll, I'll finish it up. You sure? Shut up. All right, what? Talk. Shut up. Jared Crick had that really bad head, head injury. Maybe instead of a concussion, it's a severe concussion. You know, maybe he's just not right. Maybe he shouldn't have been playing football. Maybe it's one of those things where it was so bad, maybe he shouldn't have come back yet. So when I said he should have been benched, I was right. Well, for different reasons. But all I'm saying is this bye week, he's got to use it to get himself right. Tell him bye, Seth. Later.